Ankle sprains can range from mild to severe. With mild, you maybe have difficulty walking for a day or two before you can get back to your activities and exercises, to severe where you might not be able to walk on the ankle right away. In that case, you have to rule out that there's no fracture in the area and you might, even if there's no fracture, still be in a walking boot or a brace for a while before you can get back to some of these exercises and your activities. About 15 to 45% of people playing sports will have an ankle sprain at some point. Although this number is underestimated because a lot of people will sprain their ankle and they don't get treatment for it and it's not reported in the statistics. The most common type of ankle sprain is an inversion sprain, which is when you roll over onto the outside of your foot. This can injure the ligaments and some of the muscles on the outside of the foot as well. There's three ligaments there. The most common one that gets injured with an ankle sprain is your ATFL or your anterior talofibular ligament. So you just sprained your ankle and you made sure it's not fractured. If you're trying to get back to your normal activities, here's what you can do next. The first movement we're going to look at is your ankle range of motion. It's important after an ankle sprain to get back that full movement of the ankle so there aren't any restrictions as you're doing other exercises or activities. For this we are looking at a lunge exercise where you're bringing your knee past your toes which we call dorsiflexion movement and you can add a band to this movement to help make it more pain free and to get farther into it. If this is too difficult for you to put your full weight through your your ankle, uh, then you can do this just as an ankle pump without any weight. Or if this is too easy, you can add a kettlebell or weight onto your knee to be able to get deeper into that lunge. Next, we're looking at the calf strength. For this exercise, we are starting with an isometric. So coming up onto the ball of your foot, lifting your heel off the ground. And if you can, shifting weight onto the injured ankle. By doing this, you're making the muscles in the calf work, but your ankle's not moving through a big range of motion. If this is too easy for you, you can start to do a concentric and eccentric movement of these muscles. So with that, you are doing all the way up on your toes as far as you can, and then slowly back down to use the full ankle range of motion. If both of these are too difficult for you, you can look at doing the same thing without weight bearing in through the ankle. So looking at doing an ankle pump with a band and getting the full range of motion of the ankle. The next group of muscles that we're looking at strengthening are your ankle everters, which when you roll your ankle can become stretched. These muscles can also become weaker after a period of rest. And also if you have pain and swelling in the area, that that can inhibit the use of those muscles. So strengthening these is very important to get back to 100%. What we're looking at with this exercise is an isometric, so the band is holding the ankle into a little bit of eversion and then pumping the ankle up and down to get some range of motion of the ankle in this, in this position. If this is too difficult for you, then you can do a isometric where you're just pushing into eversion of the ankle um, against a surface. A progression of this exercise would be to use the full ankle range of motion. So through full inversion and eversion using a band. Next we're looking at adding a little bit of impact to the ankle again to get back to things like running, jumping and sports. The next exercise that we're looking at is ankling, which is kind of like jogging but without full impact in through the ankles. If this is too difficult for you, you can do the same thing sitting down so you're not fully weight bearing on the ankle and just working on quick taps of the feet to get that speed back. To make this more challenging, you can start to add that impact in and just doing a jog on the spot or quick feet motion. Balance is really important to work on after an ankle sprain because when you roll your ankle, it disrupts your proprioceptive system, which is the awareness of how your body is moving in space. For this exercise, we have balance on a wedge where your toes are pointed a little bit downwards. Uh, when you have your toes pointed up or in full dorsiflexion, this is what we call the closed pack position of the joint, and it doesn't require as much stability to hold this position. When you move into a more plantar flex position, there's less joint stability and you have to rely on the muscles more. 
To make this more challenging, you can use a kettlebell and pass it from hand to hand. We call this perturbations, and it's throwing your balance off a little bit more. Many people who sprain their ankle think that with time and just slowly getting back to walking in their normal activities that the ankle will get back to 100%, but about 70% of people who sprain their ankle that first time will have a recurrent sprain. So it's very important to challenge your ankle and your body to do a little bit more than your normal movements to make sure you get back to 100%. These are just a few exercises that you can do early on after your injury, but if you're finding these easy, then you're ready for some more challenging exercises during your mid to late stages of your recovery.